What is up, people? Welcome back to another episode of the Hook It podcast. If you're a new listener, then welcome to the podcast. And if you've been around for a while, then thank you once again for your continued support. Today, I am joined by my mate, Ty Wuffenden. Ty is three-time world speedway champion. And if you've never seen Speedway before, I urge you to head to YouTube and search for his name. Speedway is probably the most dangerous sport on the planet. It's insane. And Ty lives a wild lifestyle both on and off the bike. Um, so I headed to his house earlier this week to catch up and to chat about all things Speedway, life, and everything that's going on in his life outside of the sport. So yeah, let's get into it. Don't forget, if you do enjoy this episode, please share it with your friends and it'd be great to hear some feedback. Over and out. Enjoy the episode. Like, I think what it was, like the early, the early episodes, I used to like really plan it all out. Let's talk about it in the thing. Doing it, let's just rip it now. Start. Good to see you there, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> Um, quick intro, Ty Wuffenden, current World Speedway Champion. Yep. Dude, awesome to see you as well, man. Like, genuinely. I've been thinking about you a lot recently, without getting too deep on you straight away. Why, because I broke my back? Yeah, <laughs> probably was, yeah. And like, I just thinking about, you know, obviously we went through all the shit with my family, with Ash breaking his back, my cousin. I don't know, just thinking about you a bit recently. Yeah, it's pretty scary, man. Like, it is. You don't really think about it. Like, obviously you know that them things can happen, but you don't think that they're going to happen to you. So, yeah. Um, I don't know, I was just going about my racing, had a crash, went to hospital, had a CT scan that was like, oh, you've broken your shoulder blade. And I was like, sweet, like I'll be out for four weeks and come back. And then it's like one o'clock in the morning, we're walking out of the hospital and doctor runs back in after me. He's like, come back, come back, lay down, like your back's broken. And I was like, wow. Shit. Like I'm walking around, like no stress. Yeah. And like, I wasn't worried about the shoulder blade. And then as soon as he said that, I was just like, fuck, like this is serious. I'm, I'm walking out of the hospital, man. Really? My spine's broke. My, Big my, crash or what? Like, um, not, not really, just the impact. Like, we have where the air fence is around the track. Yeah. Um, and then it, the air fence stops and then it's solid fence. So the, a guy like clipped his teammate's back wheel because he was watching me instead of watching in front of him. Right. Clipped his teammate's wheel and then just ran into me, which shot me like straight into the fence. And I knew I was gonna hit the fence, so I jumped off it. Right. But obviously I was still going at speed. So then I've like whacked the fence back first, like fully wind myself. Like <laughs> that has got to be the worst feeling, hasn't it? Yeah, been winded. Like that's I probably reckon, is the worst. It's I been reckon, a while though, man. I reckon, I've not been winded for a bit. I reckon that's the closest, the closest you can feel to death. Yeah. Like laid there. And, and I think there's always that point where you like, you know, probably know. You know I'm just winded, winded yeah. but you're thinking, this could be it, though. <laughs> like, I don't want to take the chance. Like, this could be it. Oh, man, so true. Speaking of being winded, right? You remember Ricky Turner? Yeah. Went out for a bike ride with Ricky on Saturday. Mm. I've not seen Ricky for quite a Well, we speak quite a lot. Yeah. But he's bought a mountain bike. And I'm like, come on, dude, you'll be fine. Like, come out for a ride with us. And he was, like, second guessing it. He's like, nah, I'm not, like, good enough. You know, I don't really ride mountain bikes that often. Comes out on this ride on Saturday morning. An hour in, boom, winded. Smashed his face up, oh. cut all his arms open, looks like he'd broken a couple of fingers. I felt so bad, dude. I was like, no, oh, I've not seen you for ages. Like I've hustled you into coming on a mountain bike ride. Talking of Rick, and yeah. <laughs> he built, he did my full build on my caddy, 1990 Mark One caddy yeah. pickup. That thing is so sick, man. It took a long time though, didn't it? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell it now. It's actually, I, I, I left it sat for probably like a year and a half, just out, this, out the back here, like right. where the stables are. Yeah. And um, went to start, like changed the battery, went to start it up and it starts for like 10 seconds and then like there's an issue with it. And then I like looked under the carpet and there's like all m m mouse droppings. Oh no. So I think like a mouse might have like chewed through a wire or something or the, the one of the relays is fucked or something. So... 
But when he built it for me and gave it to me, that was the sickest thing, man. Yeah. Like yeah. if anyone wants it, any caddy enthusiast <laughs> in a caddy you. building, just hit Rick up. <laughs> yeah. Because his his he's his V dub was badass. Remember that blue one? The that blue he had? one. Yeah. That yeah. was fine. His attention to detail is like next yeah. level. I feel bad, dude, because I'm like, Rick's always the guy that I call if I've got a problem because he mm. can fix everything. It's like my gas, uh, the hob in my kitchen broke the other day. Yeah. Uh, electric hob, and I'm like, Rick. <laughs> and like anything, I just ring Rick. Like washing machines, anything, dude. Bike Sick. bits, anything. But yeah. Didn't Rick used to live that, in that house? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the house I'm talking about. Oh, that house. Glen Orkey. That house. Glen Orkey <laughs> Castle. Oh, man, some shit went down in oh, Glen Orkey yeah. Castle. That was a cool crib. Mm, that was really sick. cool. Some crazy times, though. Like, Excuse me if you can hear me, hear, hear me eating. <laughs> I'm just munching on a few grapes. It's all good. But yeah, man. Yeah, good anyway. to see you. Really good to see you. And uh, it's been a long time. You were like third ever guest on this podcast all that time ago. It was like three and a half years ago now. Wow. That was ages ago. It was. It was three and a half years. And how's it going now compared to then? It's the same. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's struggling. good. It's really good. It's, it's come a long way. Like, we were just talking, obviously, before. I want to do, like, more random stuff. Like, sort of focused primarily on mountain biking and action sports. Yeah. But then I want to do, like, some more random stuff. Mm. Um, don't know, just random guests. Like, whoever. I feel like that you have to, like, work pretty hard to get the platform to a point where people will trust you to deliver in like quality content. Yeah. Do you definitely. know what I mean? Because no doubt, like most people who listen to this are like mountain bike fans. Yeah. So they're probably going to see your name and go, who? Who is this guy? Yeah. Whereas obviously in speedway circles, everybody knows who you are. But I just want to do that like more. Just yeah, for sure. Because that's the sort of podcast I like, you know, like I love Rogan because <clears throat> you always go, oh, I don't even know who this is, but it's going to be good. It'll probably be pretty interesting. Mm, for so sure. Going down that route a little bit, mate. Like, Joe like, loves apes, hey? Joe loves apes. Here's yeah. the thing about apes. Joe loves apes. <laughs> every, I swear every podcast he does, he ends up talking about an ape and how savage they are. Apes, archery, and like weed. They're yeah. pretty much <laughs> three things. Can you imagine if weed was legal here? Mm. Very touchy subject. Very touchy. Is it, is it in Speedway at all? Like CBD companies or? Nah. Because yeah. like Speedway's on WADA anti-doping. Oh, is it? Yeah. So I, like I've had lower back pain I had a crash in 2014 mm -hmm. and smashed up my lower back. So <clears throat> I have two dehydrated discs right at the bottom. I have backache all the time. Like I right. have backache now I sat here. Yeah. Like it's crazy. Um, so I was like looking into it and obviously there's like heaps of benefits of CBD. So mm -hmm. I wanted to look into it a little bit, but I can't get any CBD company that will actually give me a signed document to say that it's water approved. Ah, right. That it's got no THC in it. Okay. Okay. So... It's not worth doing. It's I don't not know. worth the hassle. Yeah, it's a two-year ban. Like, right. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's one of them things. Apparently, so. it's amazing though. Like, I, I personally not really done much with it. No. Either I've got a friend who's got a CBD company as well, but I've never really explored it. I bought some for my dad ages ago. Mm. My dad's got like crazy back pain after breaking his neck. Yeah. Um, and he really, really got on with it. It's a bit, you know, old school. He's like, yeah. well, he's well, got weed leaf on front. Like, I'm not touching this. Yeah. I don't want to be. I don't want to be high. I'm like, no, honestly, man. Like, you'll be cool. You'll be fine. So, yeah, well, it's interesting though. Like, loads more action sports athletes are getting into it. And well, my dad used to smoke weed all the time. So yeah, I'm kind he did. Of like yeah, yeah. Growing up that. around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And was that for pain as well, or is it just? Um, he never drank. Recreation. Oh, yeah, right. he never drank. Like his thing was like having a joint. So yeah. he'd go out to the pub with his mates, and when they was all getting pissed, he'd just like go outside, have half his joint, come back in. Okay. And be on that level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And still have fun and stuff. So. Mate, I don't. You know, I don't know. It's a plan. It grows day. naturally, man. It grows naturally. Exactly, exactly. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm 100 percent down with it. Yeah, I explored, explored a little bit of Not, that stuff over my life, but oh, for sure. Like I remember smoking weed when I was like 15 at school. Yeah, like <laughs> it's just what you do, isn't it? Yeah, you have to do it. Yeah, it's, it's part of growing know. up. Yeah, you have to do all those things, man. I think and anything natural. Yeah, like anything yeah, it's that the only natural shit that's a bit gnarly. Like yeah, I, I wouldn't know, touch I've any of that. Yeah, I've never, never gone done any of that stuff either. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> I'm good, I, you know, I'm not an athlete, so I'm, I'm sweet. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. So, mate, there's lo loads of things I want to talk to you about. Loads of stuff. Go. It's been oh, a long time, though, man. It has. Like, since How is your dad, apart from... Dad's good. ...taking CBD and... Yeah, dad's, my dad's really good, actually. Good. He's is living he still, the dream these is days. Is he still doing the stuff, like, with the cars and that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, obviously, my granddad passed away. Yeah, and that was I another reason that. I was thinking about you, too, because we, I was thinking about the funeral and you came to that, which was really, you know, it meant a lot, I think, to my family. Yeah. Because, like, on your come up, you know, my family was 
I won't say heavily involved, but involved in like the speedway stuff. Because you lit, did you not even some... involved. Like it was like, it was just on a, like a a good friendship level. Like obviously mm. hanging out with you and and your cousins. I was always in Sheffield. Yeah. Um, so like I'd either drive from Scunny where we used to live to Sheffield in the morning, hang out all day, and drive home, yeah, or I'd stay that. at Russ and that. Diane's. So. Yeah. You guys had like a, a big part of my growing up, and when I see like Russ and Di and that, like sometimes they came to Torin last year, and I was like caught up with them a little bit, said so like, just, just a bit of a catch up and stuff. So it's nice. You, I think a lot of people forget where they come from. Uh, yeah, totally. And, and it's you, you forget as well, like all that like come up stuff. Like I, you know, I remember I think the first time I ever met you, Sheffield Speedway, probably. You, I don't think you rode for Sheffield or anything. You were just there, like mm. this young Aussie kid time you had like escort van maybe or something like yeah, that yeah red escort van yeah wow. like and that's dude what 15 years ago? i don't know maybe not 15 but uh, like that would have been 2005 <laughs> 13 14 years ago i don't know i'm not good at math me either <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight, nine. yeah it's like 14 years ago yeah crazy long Jeez, time it is a long time it man. is a long time so i was thinking about that as well like driving down here i'm like fuck i've known you like on and off for a long time yeah so that's a decent chunk of ch- chunk of chance, me and, man, dude. Like, me and Faye was talking about it the other day. Like we've been together seven years in April. Wow, I've never met Faye, and that's just gone like that. How crazy I mean? is that? Yeah, and it's like, but there's certain people in your life, and you'll know this that you can still like pick up the phone and, and you sweet. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, 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 it's not like, like there's nothing's happened. It's just like you know you. I mean, your life. I've got people wild, that, wild, but I've got people that I haven't seen for like five years. And, well, for instance, Ash. Like, I haven't seen mm. your cousin Ash for a long time. And I was driving past Sheffield the other day, and I was like, I'm just going to call him see what's going on. And I just gave him a call, and yeah. we had a chat for 20 minutes, and then um, and that was it. I haven't spoke to him since. But, like, it's just... <laughs> yeah, it's sweet. It's just catch-up. Like, no stress. Yeah. Like, nothing's changed. He's doing his thing. I'm doing mine. I mean, as well, dude, like, you are probably one of the busiest people I, I know. I mean, your lifestyle of being a speedway rider is... Ridiculous. Yeah. It is like the travel schedule, it's the whole stupid, thing. Really. That that is something I wanted to talk to you about because traveling's hard when you don't ride bikes for a living. You don't do the most, probably the most dangerous sport in the world. Name a da- more dangerous sport than speedway. Mm. Base jumping, maybe. Five hundred cc bike with no brakes. Yeah. And the only way to ride them is flat out. It's pretty gnarly, isn't it? Like yeah. when you really like <laughs> break down what it is. Yeah, it's crazy. It is. It's crazy. But yeah, like, I don't know. <clears throat> I guess you just kind of, like, it's always hard probably at the start of the season, like the, the first month of the season when you're, like, on the 6 o'clock flights and, like, 6 o'clock in Poland is 5 o'clock here and you're going to be there two hours before, so you, your alarm goes off at 3.30. Mm. And it's just, like, it's just gnarly. Like, we do, <clears throat> I race Poland every Sunday, Sweden every Tuesday, travel on the Monday from Poland to Sweden. The GPs are on Friday, Saturday. So if there's a GP, it's like pre- fly out Thursday, practice Friday, GP Saturday, drive all night to Poland, race Poland Sunday, fly to Sweden Monday, race Sweden Tuesday, fly back home Wednesday. Yeah. And the, the Wednesday flight's a six o'clock flight back. So right. it's like a 3.30 wake up and then I come home and it's like might be one of the two days that I get to spend with the girls. So yeah. you just smash out the whole day, drink a ton of coffee <laughs> and then go to sleep. So you can't catch up on sleep that you've lost. Like, lost sleep is lost sleep. Yeah. Because <clears throat> when you go to sleep, your body needs that. So Definitely. you sleep for as long as you sleep. Um, but what we do, you break your sleep pattern so much that it's just, it's just hard. And then you're trying to mm. race a bike professionally at a high level, which means that it's just, yeah, it is gnarly. I think if the traveling wasn't there, it'd be so much easier, but... Really? <laughs> and you've cut down though, right? Because you don't you don't ride in England at all anymore. You're no. gonna have to excuse me. I'm a little bit out of the whole speedway loop, which oh, I thought cool. might be a good thing to be honest with you, because I'm not like yeah up to scratch with what's going on and stuff. But you stopped riding in England. Stopped riding in England. Why was that? Because like they they go home and away twice. Yeah. So obviously I raced for a team. I raced for Wolverhampton. Mm-hmm. I'm contracted to them still. So if I did ever come back, I would race for them. But it's like Wolves Monday. They run every Monday night. So yeah. if, if it was a week, it'd be like GP Friday, Saturday, Poland Sunday, Wolverhampton Monday, Sweden Tuesday. Jeez. And I'd race like four nights on the bounce yeah. on hardly any sleep. Yeah. Like by the time you finish the meeting in Sweden, you get back to the hotel between midnight and one o'clock in the morning. And then you get on the six o'clock flight. <laughs> and you're going to be there two hours before. Yeah. So 
you can see how like sometimes it's four hours sleep like on a wednesday it yeah. would normally be four hours sleep because right. you race late at night yeah that's you, it isn't it then yeah. you travel to the hotel and then you lay in bed and you're absolutely like rooted and then you just laid there because like adrenaline adrenaline's still going as well you can hear like you can hear that like drone from being in the car for two hours and you just kind of sat there like man i really need to go to sleep I've tried meditating, I've got lavender oil, which I put on my temples, mm. um, take melatonin to help me go to sleep, really? like a glass of milk, half and an I think hour that, When you're thinking you need to go to sleep is when you really struggle to go to sleep. Yeah. I think meditating helped me a little bit. Really? <clears throat> for sure, yeah. I downloaded an app on my phone and did a lot of stuff with that and just like focus on your breathing and don't let any thoughts come into your head and just acknowledge that they're there but don't think about them. Yeah. So that was really like interesting, but I focused a lot on... At the level that I'm at, we can't find 10% better than where we are. We might be able to find 2%. Mm -hmm. So you go like 0.2% better there, 0.2% there, like marginal gains. So yep. um, we've done pretty much like everything that we can do. Now we're testing new stuff, okay. like development stuff with my race bikes. But then you look at other stuff like fitness, nutrition, sleep. Like yeah. sleep's huge. Sleep's massive, dude. So yeah. that's where like the melatonin comes in okay. and your body produces that naturally. Yep. But you can get tablets to... Supplement it a little yeah, bit and that. increase it, yeah. And then um, like having a glass of milk half an hour before bed so that your sugar spikes and then when it drops back down below the point where it was. Okay. Because if your sugar level is like going along at like 50% and then you have a glass of milk that goes 20% up, it never comes back down to the 50%, it goes below. Okay. So having oh, that, that glass like of milk drops... Is that glass of cocoa it. before bed helps you sleep? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Didn't know that. No. Nah, Interesting. Yeah, it's a fact. Okay. So um, just trying to understand stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I found a diet which works really well for me in the off season. I always struggle to lose weight. Because um, you lose weight to be lighter. To be faster. To be faster on the bike. Yeah, there's no like rider, bike, combined weight limit. Mm -hmm. So the bikes have to be no less than 77. <coughs> and um, the riders can be whatever they want. Yeah, so, yeah. So like some of the guys I'm racing against are 52 kilos, I'm 68. Right, so they have, really? huge, 52, they have a huge Christ. weight advantage straight away. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> <coughs> who's Sorry, that? My throat's all tickly. It's all good. Who, who's that light these days? Um, oh, there's like four or five guys. Really? Like, yeah, they're just small, Polish guys. Yeah, rippers. Yeah. Which I think is quite unfair. Like to make the championship fair, they should do that so that everyone's on a level playing field. You think? Yeah. Every, yeah, I guess they do like, it in like karting and like say, other sports. Formula so, One. Yeah. Weight limit. Moto GP. They weigh the riders after the race right mm. yeah so i don't know that speedway's a little bit behind with all that stuff so i guess they'll probably do it in like five years by the time they catch up <laughs> <laughs> but i've spoke to fim about it and they're like oh it's unfair we can't ask the like guys to put you know eight kilos on their bike and i'm like no maybe not eight kilos but fours all right mm. like when they first started riding a speedway bike their bikes wouldn't have been 77 because there's a lot of work that goes into a bike to get it that low they would have been like 82 yeah yeah so that's like five kilos yeah. and that was when they first started so they was weaker they didn't know how to ride the bike mm. and their bikes would have been heavy so there's my argument like if they could do it when they first it started then. why do can't they now. do it now yeah, while yeah. they're at the top of their sport mm. interesting mm. It is, yeah. Is there like loads of other like development stuff going on with Speedway? Because <coughs> it's definitely like when you look at it from the outside looking in a sport that's, it's pretty, not same old, but like not a lot really changes with the bike. The bikes have been the same since what, 2000, well, not right. even 2000, fucking 1930 something. Yeah, if you looked at a bike, I've got a 1962 <laughs> bike fully yeah. restored um, and there's not that much difference in the look of it and mm. the design of it compared to what we're on now. But we, we do a lot of development stuff, like we've got a bike going in a wind tunnel this winter. Cool. Um, uh, yeah, we're just taking bits from other sports and... and yeah, like wind tunnel, all that sort of stuff. Like yeah. That's interesting, okay. Like, you, like I said, it's like not going to be like 5% better off, it's going to be like 0. 0.5, but you know, you get 5.5s. Yeah. And you, you get... You're there. at 25 or something. <laughs> two, two and a half. <laughs> two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Wow, not a maths podcast at all. No. Not at all. We'll try not to do any more maths. No. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know, the sport's kind of like <clears throat> pretty old school. So, mm. And because the riders run the teams, like it's not like MotoGP where a rider's employed by like factory Yamaha. Okay. So I run the team. So I pay all the mechanics, all the flights, all the hotels, yeah, yeah, yeah. engine bills, build the bikes. That all comes out of my money. So um, because of that fact, 
a lot of riders want to save money and they don't want to invest in developing. Right. It's so quite, you think that's why the sport stays yeah. stagnant sometimes because yeah. no one's pushing for that next. No. Uh, do you remember, well, obviously you remember, like Kenny Roberts yep. racing that came in? That looked like it was a bit more of like a team. Does that, would you, is that fair? I don't know. Like, that's how I looked at it. It was like they came in with like a big budget. It, the bikes looked totally different from what I remember. With Are you like talking about like of, Hancock and Hamill? Like orange bikes? I'm sure it was Kenny, Kenny Roberts racing or something that came in. Mm, I'm not sure. I'm not now. I'm second guessing myself. But yeah. I remember orange bikes coming in. But you're looking. older than me, so it might be before my time. <laughs> <laughs> it might be. Dude, it might be. All the way back to like Team X side. No, nah, but I, I just remember like Kenny, I'm sure it was Kenny Roberts came in and it looked like they were doing like tons of development work and bikes and like trying to push it forward a little bit. I don't know. I might be sure. wrong. No. Yeah. But yeah, like from a personal point of view, like I'm pushing for a lot of stuff. Mm. And it's my, my, my stuff next year is going to look so odd. Com- oh, right. like, I'll show you a picture of it in a little bit, but like it's so different to what anyone else is using. Okay. And people look at it and be like, oh, what's going on there? But it's the, it's the stuff that we're hopefully going to benefit from. Yeah. And the design that's involved that will keep me a step ahead of the game. Mm. Mm. That's the plan. It's been hard this year watching. Has it? Yeah. You've been out a little bit as well? I've been out for two months. Right. I've missed two rounds of the World Championships. No, sorry, one round of the World Championships, missed the Speedway Nations. No, I've missed two rounds, sorry. Um, went down to the BT studio and like was a pundit on, on the live cool. show, so that was cool. Doing that again tonight? Yeah, it's um, the British final tonight in so, Manchester, so I'm in the pits doing like trackside stuff. Awesome. Which will be so Enjoy alien for me. Yeah, it's sick. Yeah? I love it, yeah. <coughs> cool. And it's like, at the end of the day, BT are paying me to be a pundit. Yep. And Everyone says I'm like Marmite, you either love me or hate me because I just say it as it is. <laughs> okay. And so many people fucking can't handle the truth. Right. So like when I was talking about the Speedway Nations, like my Twitter feed was going insane. Um, <laughs> I feel like though when you came, like when you especially started coming up through the sport and doing like the World Championship stuff, it looked like you were that breath of fresh air that the sport probably needed. A little bit more controversial, tattooed up, young kid. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. And I th- like... I don't know, I definitely have a different image about me. Mm. And I'll say it as it is. Like, I don't beat around the bush. I'll just be like, if someone's a shit cunt, I'll just say you're a shit cunt. Yeah. Like, yeah. take it on Probably the Probably not on live TV, but like... No, not just, on live TV. There's <laughs> like the off-track tie and there's the on-TV the tie. <laughs> so I just try not to swear, which is really hard for me. Yeah, no But doubt. we're doing my autobiography. It's, it should be out in September. Yeah. Um, and that is like me like as you would talk to me cool like all the swear words are in there as we've recorded stuff it's just been dude it's just written that's rad that you're doing an autobiography yeah feels how, weird how does that like, how, mean, how does just, that come around it's just the i just wanted to do one like obviously a lot of people like we f- first of all we started like doing some shows with a guy called nigel pearson and we'd like travel to somewhere we'd fill the place mm. and do like a talk night oh cool Right. And so many people came up to me after and was like, man, I thought you were such like an arrogant asshole. And now that like I've been here and listened to this, like, you know, you're a really cool guy and down yeah. to earth. And like, because oh, we just talk and they get to see the real me and all that sort of stuff. But sometimes, I don't know, I guess when you're an athlete and you're confident, you come across as arrogant, which I think is the same in every motorsport. Like yeah. you have an arrogant guy, but it's not that they're arrogant. They just say it as it is. They want to be the best. You have to have that and confidence have, as well to yeah. do what you're doing. So, um, so we did them and loads of people was like, yeah, you know, like I didn't, I thought you thought it was different to the way you are and blah, blah, blah. So I was like, man, I'm going to write a book so people can like hear my story and mm. that'll reach more people. Yeah, um, for sure. For sure. I think Asda have taken it on and they're stocking it, which is really cool because Asda don't normally stock autobiographies. Right. Um, so that's cool. They've got an extra chapter in theirs. So how, how did it, how did that process start though did someone come to you first did you reach out to no I reached, a publisher out, or? I reached out to a guy called peter oaks who does mm. some um books here in the uk like a lot of speedway books and some football books and that right um and he contacted a publisher they was keen as hell to do it with me and then we just like started the ball rolling it's taken a few years though has it it's taken what is it just sitting down like this and telling stories and stuff yeah so he went and spoke with my mum uh my godfather my nan and got as much information off of them. Peter Adams, who's very close to me, mm. um, and got all like a, a big bunch of stuff. And then there's all my stories. And then he'll like say 
what my mum said and then I'll tell it from my side. So right. it goes from like my mum and dad, my nan, what she used to do, just very briefly, and then my mum and dad, and then me being born, and then yeah. up until, it'll be to date, so it'll be until the book's out. Cool. But it would have been nice to, to do it after my world championship, but we just wasn't there okay. as far as like having it ready. And I was like, nah, there's not enough stuff in there. Like there's still so much more I need to put in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also like you do one autobiography and people end up doing a second one because you do your first one and you're like, man, there's like still some stuff in, like you could nearly write two books. Oh mate, for sure. Like I'm 29 this year. <laughs> I'm 29 next month. Right. Yeah. You're still in July. You, yeah. yeah, yeah, just. I mean, like we were saying before, dude, like your life, it has been and continues to be like hectic. It, well, it looks like it, and I, you know, obviously we've known each other for a long time. But like, all the travel schedule, riding a speedway bike for a living, you know, everything that goes into that is wild. You know, obviously, like I said, we know, I've known you quite a long time. It's been super interesting seeing you go from that young kid, so, you know, stood at the side at Alton, didn't even have a ride. I think you might have been riding like second half, yeah, which is sure. basically when people used to practice. Practice after the minute. <clears throat> yeah, to now being you know, world champion and... Three time. Three time world champion, <laughs> my bad. Three, three time world champion. Um, it, you know, Mad this eye. fucking crazy, dude. Crazy, crazy, but... For me, it's weird because like, like I'll, I'll go down to Asda with Faye, like we did a food shop yesterday, two people stopped me. Really? One just had a chat to me, one had a picture with me. And it's like, I'm walking around our local supermarket, people are asking for pictures with me. But I still see myself as that kid yeah. that you first met. Yeah. Like I don't see myself any different. Yeah. And I probably don't come across any different to when. No, was, no, no, when, not all. No, like, not all. No. I'm still the same kid, and I, that's how I see myself, like the young kid that grew up in Australia, that's coming over to ride his bike, and like you go to a Monster Energy rig riot at a Grand Prix, and there's like thousands of people there, you know, shouting, and you throwing stuff to them and signing cards and that, and it's just. Just What's nuts. it like dealing with that though? Like, is it is it a trip? Has it been a battle at times, like trying to stay <laughs> level-headed as well? I, I, the only time it was a battle was the year after Dad died. Yeah. And like, so many people was coming up and like, oh, I like, hope you're alright, hope you're alright. And I was like, yeah, yeah, all good. And I just used to like brush it off and and get on with it. Mm. Um, but like, after I got through that year, just like the appreciation, like if if then people didn't come and watch us race, then I wouldn't have a job doing what I do. Yep. And I think riders forget that, you know, they try and get out quick and like hide out of the way and stuff. But like, mm -hmm. I always make time for everybody. Always have do a picture, always like sign, sign, have a little chat with people. Because yeah, if it wasn't for them, then we couldn't do what we do. So you yeah. have to appreciate them people, you know? Definitely, mate, definitely. It's those guys that pay your wages. It's those guys that are gonna buy the book and actually give a shit about you. Yeah, that's it. And Speedway is one of those sports that, again, almost from the outside looking in, but I remember with Asher's career, you know, the fans are so involved. Like, mm -hmm. They will come up after the meeting, you know, they might even slide you a few quid. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, like, it's mad. They, they're super involved. Like, I did some stuff for Great Ormond Street the other year. We, we raised over £100,000 for an ensuite bedroom in the new hospital. Wow. Um, so there's like a Woofenden room there. Right. Which is really cool. Um, I haven't actually been to see it yet. I need to go there and check it out. Um, but yeah, did that and the British Grand Prix came around and I was like, right, we have to have bucket collectors. And they was like, oh, the bucket collections don't really do too well. And I was like, a bucket collection will do well because Speedway fans are different. Yeah. Like Speedway yeah. fans care. Yeah. Like they're, you know, it's, it's just a different vibe to other motorsports. Mm. And um, yeah, they did it and like, they were so shocked at how much went Really? Yeah, it was cool. And that was, was cool. at Cardiff? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And that was just from like a Just Giving page. Right. Like over a hundred thousand. Really? Just pumping it on social media, did a charity bike ride. Oh yeah, I remember you doing the bike ride, yeah. Yeah, I've done yeah. a few. I did like Wolverhampton to the Cardiff. Okay. So yeah, yeah, I remember set that. Off. Well. Yeah. I think I set off on the Wednesday. <clears throat> no, the practice was Friday. I set off I set off on the Tuesday, so I think I raced at Wolverhampton on the Monday. Set off on the Tuesday. Cycled nearly well, I think I did six hours the first day and then stopped off and then did four and a half the second day. Right. And then chilled on Thursday, then practiced Friday and then raced the GP Saturday. <laughs> like it was a gnarly build up to like yeah, no the doubt. biggest event of the year. <laughs> and then I crashed in my first race and broke my collarbone. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Savage. <shit. laughs> Savage. Maybe not my first race, maybe it was a couple of races after. Really? 
Yeah. Fuck's sake. Yeah, I was gnarly. That's how it goes, man. That's how it goes. But like you said, like, it's, my life is hectic. Like, it I'll is. decide to do something as big as that before the British Grand Prix, which You're is... You're quite driven like that, right? You've always been this, like, I want that. And you know what? This is something I was thinking about driving down here. I remember being... Well, we were young. We were a lot younger than we are now. And you saying you wanted to have some, a house with land and a pit bike track. And then we're walking around your garden and you're like, I'm going to put a mini bike track there. And yeah, I was man. like, fuck, I remember you saying that like yeah. years ago. Probably, yeah, eight years ago. It's taken me more. a while, but like I've, I've kind of skipped a few ladders, a few steps on the property ladder. Yeah. Like someone told me before, like bite off more than you can chew. So I bite so off more than I can chew. Driven to chew like, happen. Chew like fuck. <laughs> So I got my house in Sheffield, lived in that for a couple of years, um, rented that out for a bit and sold it, and then rented an apartment down here um, in Derby. And then I was like, I don't want to rent an apartment because I'm paying someone else's mortgage. So mm. then I went from like a 130,000 repossession property to um, a new build for like 380. Okay. Lived in that for another couple of years and then flicked that and then moved into the farm. Mm. And like, yeah, like the house before I forgot it because the first house was repossession and it was under um, stamp duty price. Okay. So obviously there was no stamp duty in it. Then the next house I bought, I didn't, I like scraped every single penny together that I could find and forgot about the stamp duty. Oh no. Yeah. And then I got this bill from the solicitors and I was like, <clears throat> fuck, <laughs> fuck, I didn't know about that. And then, yeah, borrowed some money off my mum, paid that, then paid her back. But like the first few mortgage payments was like, emptying the change pot really yeah it was hard and then but you kind of look back at them times now and you're like yeah you kind of appreciate it definitely it's it's cool and then this place is the same like this place was so bad when we bought it Mm. like lintels that had like lintels had dropped all the roof it was cracked up to the roof and like just so much stuff yeah but the nice thing about this place is we can rent the stables out Okay. So That's they rent nice land income. out the back and that kind of like helps pay the mortgage. Mm-hmm. And then this winter when we was in Australia, we was like, right, let's, let's, when we come back to Australia every year, we rent. So it costs like 20,000 bucks a year rent to be there for like the three months. Wow. And I was like, if we do this for the next 10 years, that's $200,000. Yeah. So I was like, let's try and scrape some money together and build a house. <laughs> So I like, took a director's loan out of my company, remortgaged this house, um, and just like got our savings and just threw everything at it. And that was, uh, this, the house is nearly finished now, but we've been doing like payments throughout the year. Right. And I haven't been racing for two months. Yeah, and yeah, like yeah. I've remortgaged this place. And so if you're not racing, there's the- No income. Really? Yeah. So pay per, per fa- event, per yeah. point, whatever it is. Faye is employed by the company, <clears throat> so it's like, me and Faye work for the company, so it's like both of us have, now have no income. Yeah. So it's been absolutely like savage. And then I remortgaged this, and yeah, it's, it's, even now it's hard. Yeah. And then we're like trying to like do a few things around the house to make it look a little bit nicer, and it's like, oh, I can't do that yet, can't afford it. Mm. Um, but it'll be the same situation, like in two or three years' time, I'll look back to now and go, man, that was so hard. And it makes you, you know, realise yeah, it's just a perception thing, isn't it? Like, it makes you realise how hard you're working for this stuff. <coughs> Don't come easy. Dude, I was in... <coughs> this is, like, I would never tell anyone this, but, like, I was, cr- I was crying a month ago. Really? Yeah. I was sat in the living room on the floor, like, mortgaged up to my eyeballs and just the stress of it. It's tough, man. Yeah. It's tough. And it doesn't matter whether you have, like, you know, if you're worth a million pounds <coughs> or if you're worth a hundred thousand pound, you always take what you can't really afford. Yeah. So you, everyone struggles. Yeah, doesn't oh, matter if you've got a lot of money or a little bit of money. Yeah, everyone's in the same boat. Yeah, because you always try and get that little bit more. Yeah, and you always put yourself under that bit of stress. Yeah, and then but when you don't feel like it's coming together, you quickly end up having a bit of a breakdown. Yeah, like <laughs> literally, it was like fucking five minutes. But like, yeah, just the stress of it, and I, like, I sold one of my world championship bikes. I had two from that year, which is like sweet. But I sold one of them went through the container and like got out loads of old like race jackets and mm. got all that stuff on eBay, like just selling so much stuff to try and pay the mortgage. It's crazy. Jeez. Yeah. But that's, that's the sort of shit though that people don't see, right? I think, and that's something that, that, that I've, oh, I want to talk to you about in a way. Like, I, again, I remember you, you know, on the come up, probably starting with hardly anything. And then there was definitely a bit of your career when I knew you probably a little bit better, like when we lived in that crazy house and stuff. 
where you, it looked like you were starting to make decent money, but did it affect you though, where you were just a little bit wild with it all, a little bit like, what the fuck? Yeah, what you're going to think is like, when I was like, I don't know, uh, probably would have been, what year do you reckon you lived there? Oh, 2008, man. maybe? 2008, 2010, yeah, I'm trying to think. I had yeah, the car. so like 2008, 2009, I was 18, 19, and like earning like not huge money, but okay money, but I'd like always keep like 300 quid mm. for myself. Yeah. Which I'd blow at the weekend. Yeah. So that's when you would have seen me like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go out in town, and I've just got 300 quid in my pocket, and I'm just like, <laughs> sheets, left, right, and center. <laughs> Wouldn't change it for nothing, but like, man, I, when I was that age, I you know, wasted some money. Mm. Yeah, I, I remember being like, I'm, old know, like I'm older now, I'm more mature. Dude, so I look back and go, 100%. You need man, those, why did you I need do that? that? Time. Like, I always look back at that, at that time as well, because like, I was a little bit wild and out. You know, I had a good job, living with a load of friends in a house, and it was just party central all the time, and didn't really respect like, the, the job that I had. You know, again, it's just a learning curve. I was probably a little bit too old for it, though, if I'm honest with you. I was like 20, <laughs> 20 22 or something. No responsibility. Yeah, no, exactly, like no responsibility. Like everything I earned, paid my little bit of rent and I was yeah. like, I'm good. Like the rest of it's just for partying basically. And then you wake up like five years later and go, probably could have had a house paid off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And again, dude, like I wouldn't change that stuff for the world. Like we had a lot, of, a lot of cool experiences, a lot of fun nights out and, mm. you know, did some cool stuff, but you definitely do look back. And I think I, like if I was in your position at 18, 19 and you were earning like good money, I'd have done, I'd have been in the same sort of boat. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I'd have been like, nah, I just want to like pie it up and spend it all. And, and then after my dad died, I grew up. Like that made me, yeah, that made me grow up so fast. Yeah. So the year after I bought, a, bought the house, yeah. lived in it for two years, um, set up a savings plan. Right. And it was like, <clears throat> would you retire if you didn't win, win your first race at Wolverhampton on a Monday night? Mm. No, I wouldn't. Okay, so you don't need that money. So okay. I'd take a race win, the money that I'd get for that race win, I'd stick it in a bank account and savings account. Oh. And then that was every Monday, so direct debit, boom, forget about it, can't see it, can't access it. And then after like six months, I looked at it and I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. So I was like, well, I probably wouldn't do the same if I was riding in Sweden or Poland as well. So then right. I started doing it from Sweden and Poland. Okay. And I did that for two years. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> I had a two year fixed rate and then the day after my fixed rate finished, I went into the bank and I was like, can I pay my mortgage? And she was like, yeah, that's um, £448, I think it was at the time. And I was like, no, I want to like pay the balance. And she was like, oh, really? And I was <laughs> like, yeah. And she's like, how much is it? And I was like, oh, 86 grand. And yeah. she was like, oh, um, I'm going to have to get the manager. So then she went and got the manager, boom, paid that off. And nice. that, was, that was a big milestone in my life. Definitely. Like yeah, two years after free, buying yeah. the house, Fuck. I was mortgage free. It was crazy. Awesome. Crazy. Awesome. So that was pretty gnarly. Yeah, and obviously, you know, losing your dad was, you know, obviously it's unfathomable. Unfav I can't say it. unfathomable. Yeah, just say a word that you can say. Yeah, <laughs> hard. <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting, though, that you look back at that and, you know, it's made you grow up a little bit and stuff because... Dude, your dad would be so proud of all this shit, obviously. Mm. Um, for sure, he's watching. Yeah, for sure, for mm. sure. Um, That's just part of life, man. Everyone dies. I'm pretty savage with stuff like that. Like, yeah, you, you probably have a way different take on it, though, because you put your life at risk almost two or three times a week. I never usually. really thought about it until I broke my back two months ago. Really? Mm. And then it's like, wow, yeah, what I do is pretty crazy. Like, do I want to be doing this for the next 15 years? What, what do you think you'd be doing now if you didn't make it as a speed rider? Well, oh, I don't know. I always say like a bricky because like, that's just probably what I'd do. I'd be in Australia laying bricks as they earn good money. Yeah. Um, it's pr pretty easy. If you can hold your cock and piss in a toilet, you can lay bricks. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But like having this two months off has like really made me think about, you know, when... <clears throat> They're saying like when one door closes, another one opens. Mm -hmm. Not that my speedway door's closed, but I've been injured for two months and it's given me time to do stuff like get in the container, sort all my shit out, get to send some of it to Australia, some of Faye's brother's stuff. He's moved to Canada. So when he moved out of his house, he put it all in our container. Right. So we're going to send that out. Um, sold some of my gear so that I could pay my mortgage. Yeah. Um, and then it's like, okay, like this is really my only income. Mm. Like renting the stables out is helping pay for the mortgage. Um, 
you know. <clears throat> so, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's <clears throat> it just makes you think about it. So I've got some like ideas that I've had for probably like three years, which I'm definitely going to do now that I've had time to sit down and think about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is what we was talking about in there. Yeah. Um, so I won't tell you now. I'll just wait until the, it's all set up and you can share it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'll sponsor the podcast. Let's do it. <laughs> um, so that's really interesting. Like I've spoke to a lot of people um, about um, doing some stuff at some events and that. So a yeah. um, bit of networking. And I'm lucky that I'm in a position where I can like network in, in different, um, different sports, you know, road racing, Donington Park's just around the corner. So mm. there's loads of events on there. They've got Download Festival. Um, so yeah, it's really interesting. It's an exciting like chapter in my life away from what I'm doing. But first of all, we need to make sure that before I start to get investment for that and get that ball rolling, that I'm stable here. Yeah. Because now that I'm not racing, I'm not really stable. Oh yeah. I'm chewing. Yeah. Yeah, far. yeah. 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 <laughs> but um, yeah, like I said, a few years down the line, I'll be looking back and going, yeah, sick. This is fine. Yeah. Do you, have you not had an injury then? that's done this to you? No, I think the longest I've been out for was six weeks with a broken scaphoid. And other than that, it's just off season, which is normal anyway. Yeah. 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 Like right. I, uh, what, so for like, when's this podcast going out? Friday. Friday. Yeah. Right. So I'll be practicing for the Grand Prix on Friday. Oh really? Yeah. You're racing the Grand Prix? Saturday? I'm racing the Grand Prix this weekend. Where's that? Uh, Rostov up in Poland. Is it? Yeah. So I haven't rode for two months and my first event back. Perfect time and get this thing out. The world championship. Jeez. Yeah, crazy, eh? Yeah, I need to sit and watch that one. I've not watched one for a bit, I'll be honest with you. <clears throat> it's kind of hard if you don't have BT Sport at your house too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you can even stream it anywhere. Nah, it's tough. Nah. Like I said, I've been a little out of the loop. But So you think this, is, this, this injury in particular, you know, it's probably like the time of your life getting a little bit older. 29 soon, man. I know, it's crazy. Crazy. Has made you just think a little bit more about where shit's going and whatever. Yeah, like I... Every, every bit of money you have is tied up in this place and building a house in Australia. Like, I'm in a sick situation to have this farm yeah. and be building a house in Australia. But it doesn't mean that it's all, you know, no, happy it's not days all. <laughs> no, and, no, all. and cruising. There's a lot of grinding going on behind like, the scenes, yeah, obviously. No, I'm struggling. Yeah. I feel like I'm a, a tunnel boring machine that's just like just grinding away and it's yeah. like, it's hassle and... I could be living in like a small new build on an estate and mm. not have any stress, but that's not me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's not me. Like, Just go that little extra. Yeah. <clears throat> I always want more. And I read the, um, I didn't read it, I um, listened to it on audiobooks, um, The Secret by Rhonda Bryan. I don't know. Yeah, you should, you should listen to that. It's pretty yeah. cool. It's about the law of attraction and how like if you believe stuff, it happens and like mentally rehearsing. Oh, this is what Oprah used to push. Yeah. Vision board. <clears throat> yeah. That sort of stuff. Yeah, like where you want to be and like the more yeah. you think it, like it, you surround yourself with them positive vibes and where you want to be and it just like starts to happen and unfold. Mm. Um, and when I read that book, there was a part about like appreciating what you've got and I was like, man, I definitely don't do that. Right. And then I started to appreciate like <clears throat> the place that we're living in and being able to do the job that I do. And yeah, I travel a lot, but I get four months off in the winter when pre-season starts. We go back to Australia, like I live a mm. mad lifestyle. I'm so lucky. Mm. Um, but it's like I've created that for myself and you need to like step back and appreciate Definitely. what you've created. Definitely. And that helps the next things unfold. Yeah, because like, you know, your initial thoughts with that are just stress or fuck, I can't believe I've done that. But then when you actually do remove yourself from it and look at the whole situation, you go, fuck, it's like, I get to do all this stuff. You yeah. don't have to, you get to do it. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's a mind shift change. Yeah, and <clears throat> that was really like instrumental in me, like appreciating what I've got and that helped me a lot. I only read it like last year. Right. Crazy dude, our book can like flick a switch. Yeah, it just makes crazy. you think, think about things differently. Mm. And it's the first book, I, like, I'm not very good at reading. So it's the first book I've actually sat down and like listened to. Yeah. Um, which yeah. was very hard for me because like I'm always on the go, <laughs> but I got it done like on airplanes and stuff. Yeah. Like I had to listen to a, a couple lot of hours time there. airplanes. <laughs> yeah. So I just like tried to make the best of my time on there. Mm. Um, and like <clears throat> with my book, they want me to narrate it for audiobooks. So they want me for four days in the studio. And I was yeah. like, I think it'll probably take six. If you think it's going to take four, <laughs> it's going to take me six. 
because I'm so <laughs> like Faye will read something and she's at the bottom and I'm like on the second paragraph. Wow. And I'm like, bullshit, are you at the bottom? And she's like, I am. Can you? Touch? And I'm like, dude, I'm here. And she's like laughing at me. I'm like, wow. you've got to narrate it though, man. Like I listen to quite a few audio books and when when it's not the author that's narrating it. It's not a good, nowhere near. Yeah. Like it needs your personality and your take on some things. Mm. And you should, should not tell you how to suck eggs, do a podcast which, which also like talks more about some of those um, chapters. Yeah. That'd be cool. Like go a little bit more in depth with certain stuff. That'd be sick. Yeah, once, <clears throat> I guess once, once the book's out, like I've obviously spoke to you about setting up a podcast. Yeah. You know, I'd like to, I've got a lot of contacts with like athletes and, I think it'd be cool for people to listen to. And also I wanna like understand, I wanna, I wanna hear people's stories. Yeah. Like I hang out with Alex Lowe's, Sam Lowe's and Tommy Searle, like we go to train together, Leon Haslam. And we have a lot of like, we train together a lot and we like have a lot of banter between each other. <laughs> but we don't really like know each other's story. Yeah, yeah. And it's All like, man, I stuff. spend so much time with these guys and I don't actually really know who they are. That's interesting. But I do on a friendship it, level. Yeah, yeah, but again, it's like a, the surface level, isn't it? It's only when you like sit down like this and you go, no, tell me about like, how did you get to there that you, you know, you break through all that stuff. It's yeah. not something you just normally no. talk about, I don't think. No. You know? So that's why I want to do my podcast. That'd um, be cool, man. So yeah, and I like watch Joe Rogan's podcast and listen to the Hooker podcast. So <laughs> they're like the only two I do. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to lie to me. Um, it's interesting though that you can walks them that's interesting that's something that i've been screwing with a little bit now i'm trying to like get the studio set up in sheffield where mm. you can record stuff but dude it's such a good like you said before it's like use your time wisely if you're traveling that amount of time like there's no point listening to shitty music and just having dead time you might as well learn something and it like it only takes that little bit dude life life change do you know yeah. what i mean like listen to the book or the guy that runs um lki he, oh, yeah. he um, in Aussie, Jason Daniel, he just set up his podcast right. and he's talking with like other founders of companies because he's cool. got a, quite a big company now. Mm. Um, and I listened to the one the other day um, of the founder of Penny Skateboards. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right. That was cool. That's I think he's like that. Yeah, I probably would. Yeah. I would. Jason, Jason Daniel podcast. Right. Okay. Um, I'll find that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and he's spoke with a couple of different founders. I think he's only done four podcasts up to now. Mm. But listening to the Penny one was like, it was interesting. And obviously I'm looking at like setting up my new like business yeah, and stuff, yeah, yeah. so. It's a cool way of documenting like your life as well, I find like, it's weird. Yeah. You know, obviously people now know my voice and stories that have been told on this podcast. It's just a nice thing to look back on at some point as well. Yeah, for sure. Like, like, you can cool. always go back to it and yeah, go, yeah, yeah. oh man, like I remember doing that. And yeah. yeah it's like we were memories. talking about before, like there's still guests on here <laughs> that I look back and I'm like, fuck, as if like they came on here. That's that's weird. That's like yeah. a long time ago or whatever it is. Who do you reckon your best podcast is with? The best podcast? Apart from me. Apart from you. Uh, yeah, the first one you did. Oh, uh, God. Um, dude, there's been some cool guests on this thing. Who did you enjoy talking to the most? I, I genuinely enjoy talking to most people. Mm. Like, I really do enjoy it. But there's been a few. There's a guy, Matt McDuff. So he's a, a mountain bike, like, professional, I guess, slope style mountain biker, but he came on and talked a lot about uh, cold water th therapy, like cryotherapy and yep. Wim Hof method meditation. That was super interesting mm. because again, if you look at Matt McDuff, his perception maybe of just being a mountain biker, you don't understand how deep that guy is. Like he's a deep thinking, smart son of a bitch. Mm. So he's amazing. I, I, you know, I'd love talking to Matt and you know, I've met some cool people through it as well. Like we don't just do the podcast and that's it. People, you know, you stay friends with these people forever. Yeah. Uh, Ollie Wilkins from down south. Uh, Ollie, Ollie's been on a few times now. Me and Ollie have become really good friends through this thing. He's always a good blast. Man, there's been so many. Danny Mackerskill was insane. Really interesting guy. There's been a lot. There's been, mm. there's been tons now that I look back <coughs> and go. Who was the guy you spoke to from America? I think, was he BMX? Uh, da, 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 da. X been, Games, maybe an older guy. Uh, Todd, Todd Main. There's been Todd. Mm. We've got, uh, oh, he's Aussie actually. Ar oh, what's his name? Aaron Baker was pretty interesting. He's the guy who was paralyzed racing motocross. He's yeah, got a right. Netflix documentary. Oh, really? Yeah, that was sick. Really yeah. interesting. And he nice. basically taught himself how to walk. Fuck. Yeah, he was paralyzed. Like That's gnarly. Quad man. Quadriplegic, I believe it is. Arms and legs. Yeah. 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 And he's, he's rehabbed himself to be able to walk. And he walked across something called Death Valley in California, the desert. Mm. Walked across there on his own, single, solo. Crazy. Really interesting guy. So it's been like... <clears throat> So many, but 
I don't know when you. I mean, this is this will be the eighty first episode. It's quite a lot of people. Yeah, man. A lot of people are like you're catching just, Rogan up. Yeah, getting there was like <laughs> fifteen hundred or something, dude. I but, think he's on way more than that. Yeah, that, that's a monster. <laughs> have you watched his one with um? Have you watched his one with the uh, oh, what's his name? Steve O. Yeah, I have. Mate. Yeah. yeah. He's got some stories. How, Steve-O's podcast good as well. How insane is that guy? Yeah. He's, li- he's lived a life, man. He's lived a real life, hasn't he? Yeah. Like, the whole the thing. The apartment. Like, the double apartment. He yeah. knocked the wall through yeah. and he had a skate, a skate park <laughs> skate in there. Park in it. And then punched a hole because the next door neighbour was pissed off. <laughs> punched a hole through the wind, through the thing. Seems like something you'd do. I feel like you, you're a bit of a, a, bit of a Steve-O. Something, <laughs> some something I would have done. Yeah, definitely would have done. Definitely, definitely. would have done. I did not give a fuck about anyone else when no. I was a kid. No. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> do, you know, do you know who I found really interesting after watching one of his podcasts? Oh. Elon Musk. Yeah, Elon's a Dude, wild cat. He's a smart motherfucker. Yeah, who'd have thought, eh? Hey, Tesla owner. Like, sending people to the moon, rockets to the moon. Have you watched his story, like how he started? So he created a game when he was like seven years old and sold it for 500 bucks. Right. Um, Realised at a real young age that he was like a little bit odd like smarter than everybody else. Mm. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and then, then he went into business with something else, went to college, dropped out of college, set, opened up PayPal, which was known yes. as set up as something else prior to that, yeah. and then sold it for like millions. And then went on to the next thing, and then he did Tesla, mm. and then he went from Tesla to SpaceX. So like NASA, to, to send a, NASA, it cost NASA say like one million to send a spaceship to outer space. It cost Elon Musk like two hundred thousand dollars. Crazy. Because he's built the factories and does, builds everything in house and mm. doesn't buy anything out of house. So SpaceX are doing all that stuff and like he wants to create life on Mars. There's water on Mars, so Would you go to Mars? Yeah. Would you? Yeah. But it's not gonna be my generation. Like it is, they're on about sending people in like twenty twenty two. Yeah, it's not it's a one way trip though, isn't it pretty much? Like Yeah, pretty much. They're probably gonna die when they get there, but yeah, you ain't coming back. <laughs> it's a one way trip. But he is <clears throat> Like, he's now sent a SpaceX ship up with heavy cargo, like, last week. Um, and then he's, he can send rockets to refuel the ship. So he knows that he can take cargo. Yeah. Then he can send the rockets to fuel them. So when they're out of space, he can then get them to Mars. Right. And then it's retrieving them back. It's but back, they're yeah. already... They can get there. They know they can get there with a load of stuff. Yeah. And they have to, like, build little buildings and create CO2 so that... The, uh, that Mars get, builds an atmosphere again and it's so interesting it's to watch. wild, man. Like, yeah. He's doing... He's just pushing that, the stuff that yeah, people exactly. didn't think was possible. Exactly. And that's and why I find him Tesla so interesting. Tesla in space, dude. There's a Tesla just floating around. I know. Space. What a legend. What on earth is that? No, he was really interested on Rogan stuff. Like, really interested on that. And he's, I mean, like, really scared about AI. Yeah. Artificial intelligence. Elon it's, is, like, scared about it. That it's him that's doing the whole... It's him that's helping it. Brains. Yeah, but Chim- chimps are so far, I think, isn't it? You have you have the people that like regulate everything, companies, mm. but they take the the government take quite a long period to do it. But he said AI is advancing that quick that by the time they've done it, they're gonna be too far behind. Too far behind like he yeah. thinks that AI is gonna like kill humanity, and he's the one like pushing it, which is crazy. But he doesn't want that. Mm. He wants he wants it to be capped. Yeah, so yeah, that they yeah. can't be smarter than humans but like technology is so crazy man it is Te- uh, technology in space like away from what I do are, like, they, are they the things you're into I'm not into technology because I'm so like shit with it <laughs> but after watching all like Elon Musk videos on YouTube and that like I've just learned so much stuff about yeah. AI and it's how scared he is that like it's gonna like take over the world and <clears throat> like if it if it if you're pissed off with me and you have the thought, like, I'm going to kill him because mm. he's pissed me off that much. Something that's got AI, you could have a robot in here working in the house and you say red something light. to it and it goes red light and picks a knife up and goes, whack, job done. But that's because it's thinking from a computer. Yeah, yeah. Like, how do you, how do you balance that out? Yeah, figure out the emotion. Because a human has an emotion yeah. and they're like, oh, I wouldn't do that because, you know. You can squash it. Because I can't do it. Whereas AI might just go, AI will just go, boom, and yeah. And, mm. like, there's one thing where he's like, oh, do you think, like, artificial intelligence will be used in, like, wars? And he's like, you can do it now. Yeah. And the guy's like, what do you mean? And he's like, you can take the, 
face recognition out of an iPhone, put it on a drone with an explosive, program the picture of the person that you want, send it through an office, and when it gets to that person, it'll blow up. Yeah. Oh, mate. And I was like, like doing wow. That. Doing that shit. Wow. For sure. For sure. 100%. Yeah. I've seen all that. Do you see all the conspiracy about that face app thing? You know, people using that. they got like 150 million people's data. Like, you know, yeah. photo. Wow. But that's like some sort of conspiracy that it's a Russian bot or something like that. Smashed it. Yeah. <laughs> Killed it, right? Like, yeah. Absolutely nailed it. And all yeah. those idiots are sat there going, yeah. <laughs> I did it. Yeah. Did you do it? Nah. You didn't do it? Nah. Oh, man. I saw the thing first. I, saw, I actually saw the conspiracy theory. Oh, and really? I was like, I ain't touching it. I ain't <laughs> going anywhere near it. Nah, I hate all that stuff, dude. Honestly, like the whole social media thing is... I, I'm always on the fence with that stuff. Yeah. I really am. I, if, if it wasn't for the business and stuff and having to have it... Wouldn't have it. Old nah, school. No way. Go old school, man. If you want me, just give me a call on the phone. Like. Yep. I'm exactly the same. Yeah. Like I, when we was talking to the book guys, send me an email. I called them. I was like, just call me. Talk yeah. to me about it. Don't send me an email because I won't reply for a month. Mm. And they sent another email. Called them again. I had to tell them three times. Call me. Call you, yeah. I'm not going to reply. No. Nah. I've seen the email. I know everything about it. But if you don't call me... I ain't gonna reply. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And like, yeah, like when people text, I'm like, man, just pick up the phone, call, and like, job done. Yeah. And I, I delete social media so much. Like, I hardly, po- I, I do post a bit, but well, you have to because of because of what I do. What you do, yeah. right? You have and like to. that promotes book sales and exactly. merchandise sales. It's just that fine balance, man. Of people just been so strung out on followers and likes, and yeah, you see crazy. in Canada that the, uh, I'm sure it's Canada that Instagram have like got rid of likes in Canada. So you like you, you can physically see it, yeah, but but people don't look at it and go, oh, it got a thousand likes, yeah, or whatever. I think that's amazing. Mm. Like I say, I'm I'm on the fence. But the thing about social media is like, say for instance, um, I don't know, you follow somebody like Dan Bilzerian, mm. and you're like, man, this guy's rich, he's done this, he hangs out with heaps of chicks, like this guy's like living the dream. But people will look at that. He's only posting the best parts of what he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. not posting about like when he's on his own and he can't have friends because he's that minted and yeah, yeah, yeah. probably won't be able to have a normal relationship because every girl wants him and he can have whatever. Like, his life actually isn't that great. For sure. And everyone looks at someone in social media like, you know, people take the best angle photo so that they look better. And, you know, like when I do my Instagram post, I look for a picture where I look like I'm riding the bike really good. I never yeah. post a picture of me when I look a bit out of shape or a bit Elbow awkward. Down. Yeah, and I'm <laughs> sure every other athlete does the same. Yeah. Like if you're a pro mountain bike rider, you're not gonna post a picture of you looking like a squid. No, it's true. And then everyone's like, oh, I wanna be like that, I wanna be like that. But in reality, yeah. it isn't like that. No. Like then it's like, don't get in the like get in the real world and the don't vlog try stuff like stuff. vlogging. I've, again, I've spoke about this on the podcast quite a bit. Like I was watching this. You heard of Jon Olsen? No. He's like he owns douchebags yeah. and he's like a pro skier, like yep. Red Bull pro skier. And like his vlog, if you watch it, you just like, what the fuck? Like the, this guy's life is basically traveling around, <clears throat> buying sports cars, living in like in, insane houses in Marbella, just. From the outside looking in, like perfect, everything's yeah. perfect. But you don't but know if he's renting and got everything no on finance. Idea. And no idea. And struggling. also, you look at that and go, like, what do kids think? Because mm. even I got to the point. I, I watched a few of them because I was, you know, I was sort of interested in what he was doing and whatever. And uh, you know, it just gives you that feeling of like, well, my life's dog shit compared to this guy. Mm. Like, what the fuck am I doing? Do you know what I mean? I'm, I ain't doing shit. And then it's, you start to like go, oh, well, I'm not happy. Yeah. And, you know. and it's just that, like you say, it's that highlight reel social media, vlog, this is, you know, don't get me wrong, if, that, you know, if it's that guy's life day in and day out. Like, like I spoke about play. when I was in the living room crying before yeah. about how much financial stress I'm under, not racing and having all my mortgages. Yeah. And then, you know, like other things, but when I post a picture, it doesn't say like, here's a picture of me sat on the living room floor <laughs> crying because I can't afford to pay my fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. mortgage. Like you, you don't say you that. You don't do it? No. No. I yeah. don't know, there's, again, it's that fine balance of, I don't know, like maybe people would maybe like I think you need to there's a few people that do it really good like I've got a few friends that post honest like I'm having a shit day today and they've got hundreds of thousands of followers yeah but But I think once you've got that fan base you can post something if you start do it if you've never done it from the start if you do it from the start people would be like I don't want to see this shit yeah yeah, so it's like yeah yeah, it's, it's, it's stupid man how do you handle all that stuff like with the fame side of it I know we spoke about it briefly but for people listening so Speedway is like 
you know, in Poland especially, is like na national sport. Yeah. And, you know, I've been around you in Poland and people, you know, are fucking... Poland's hard. Like, it's just wild. Poland's you know, hard. You, like, I can't a, sit down. You're a celebrity in Poland. Yeah, like, I sit, legit. I sit down for lunch and, like, someone will come and ask me for a photo and it's like, I want to do the photo, but I would also like them to respect the fact that I'm halfway through my meal and mm. I want to sit down and finish my meal before I stand up and do a photo. Yeah. And they don't. They just come up, oh, can I have a photo? So I always end up doing it. And I'm sat there like, fuck, man, like, can they just wait like yeah. five minutes? Like, is that too much to ask for? Because it, I wouldn't come up to somebody eating their meal and go, oh, dude, come and do this for me. Yeah, it's true. Like, if they're eating, they're eating. Yeah. So that side's a little bit tough, but I don't know. I don't, I don't mind having pictures of people. And I feel like you've probably got quite a nice balance because you can probably come here and there might be a time where you go to Asda and nobody recognises you. There might be a time where one person recognises you. Normally one. Normally one, yeah. but like in Poland, Never it's going to be like yeah. ins insane. 30. Yeah, exactly. It also depends on which town I go to. Right. Some towns only have speedway. Oh, some people hate you over there, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. No, I'm joking. But like you go to like Gorzhov, <laughs> right. they don't have anything apart from speedway. Right. So just walking from the hotel to the van, someone will stop you. Mm. Like mm. it's mad. Um, Are those, you know, again, a lot of people listening probably haven't seen like a speedway GP or a Polish league meeting. I mean, those events are... No, so how many people do you get now at like a Polish, a Polish when, Sunday evening league meeting is like... When you load the podcast up, I'll, I'll give you a link to share with it. <laughs> a race from the British Grand Prix where I go from last to first. Yeah, that's it. The yeah, fans yeah. and it's like, that's what I do. Yeah. So it'll be cool to post that and then they'll be like, oh, this is what he does. And then yeah, they'll yeah, the story. It'll be a, yeah. So, okay. So if you're yeah. listening now, hopefully you are. There's a link in the description to watch one of your races. And I yeah. actually posted some stuff the other day in our closed Facebook group because I knew you were coming on here. So yeah, sick. anyway, but, but yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. But I'm, I'm pretty excited to do the podcast. I've got a cool like, list of people that I want to have on the show and a mm. um, bit of varied stuff, motorsports. And then, like I said, when I go to Australia, I can, I've got a few guys yeah. that do Ironman and, um, one one races motocross, one's full time Ironman, does four four races a year. Okay. Um, so yeah, it'd be like real interesting stories and just like understanding who they are and what they're about and what their ethics are. And yeah, yeah, it'd be wicked. Yeah, you should do it, man. For sure, I'll definitely do it. It's happening. Yeah, it's I know happening. it is. I know. And I know you've said it's happening. So it's happening. like I said, I've, I've watched the I've watched the Joe Rogan podcast a lot, and I like the fact that you can see what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Even if you don't watch the whole thing, you can still listen mm. and not watch what's going on, but then you can always watch and... Yeah, it's definitely added that so that's the level plan of professionality for, to it. That's the plan for in there, like I said, like have a few cameras set up yeah. and have a little studio where we sit down and riff, talk loads of shit. Yeah, man, that's what it's all about. It's the beauty mm. of it. It is. it is. So what's next for you, Dave? <laughs> man, I don't know. Just... You got some more podcasts lined up? Yeah, these things are always happening right now. Yeah, I mean, trying to do, I try and do like two to three a month, give or take. It depends. And then I've got like a few mini series which run through the whole through the same network as well. Um, but yeah, other than that, man, I mean, I've been a little bit slow with the podcast stuff because the actual oh, I, what I can't forget is like I have an actual business to run. Yep. So I'm trying to like focus on that. We've got like new brands happening, and the podcast. To be fair, is it, still just very much a marketing tool. It's a hobby. It just, I enjoy doing it. I enjoy sitting down with people like you and just chatting shit, basically. Um, but other than what's next, dude, it's just, I don't know, continue building the business and the podcast and try and get the studio set up in Sheffield. And I want to get a, a nice studio where people can come, like you said, and just hang out and, you mm. know, have a coffee and just, yeah, record some stuff, video, audio, the whole thing. But it just needs to level up a little bit. Yeah. But I know. like how you said that, like, yeah, I'm enjoying doing the podcast, but I need to remember. Yeah. What it's like with things actual... like me, it's like, okay, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this. Okay, if I do that, it's going to take away from my speedway, mm. but it's my speedway that allows me to do what I want to do. Yeah. It's fine balance. And you have to remember that. You always do. Like, I think, yeah, there's always, yeah, you're al the business allows me to do this, yeah. basically. And sometimes I will get way ahead of myself and I'll have way too much time on the podcast. And then, although, yeah, it might come out sick, you've got a few good guests, there's been a massive detriment to actually running the company. Mm. So it's, it's about playing that fine balance and being organised as well. And, um, one, one thing for me, I think, is like, <clears throat> when I first bought this place, I knew what I was taking on, yeah. the work that was going to be involved in it. And that year, I'd go away racing, 
I'd come back, I'd work on the house until about 11 o'clock at night, and then I'd go to sleep, wake up in the morning, seven till 11, same again, and then I'd go away and do all my early mornings, late nights, racing. And I struggled, well, I didn't struggle, I think I finished second or third that year in the championship. But I didn't win it because my mind was so occupied in this. Yeah. And then at the end of the year, I stood back and I was like, this place cost me a world championship, mm. but I got, the world, I got this place because I won world championships. So yeah. that's what made me realize. Got you. And that was only like two years ago. Yeah. Yeah, I've yeah. been here two, two years this year, so. Right. Where were you at in the championship before this injury? Uh, it was first two rounds and that was pretty below average. Right. But that means that I was going to finish the season strong, which okay. is what I always aim for anyway. Yeah. Whereas last year, winning the championship, I started the season really strong and tapered off as the season went on because okay. you can't keep that intensity for the whole time. Right. So, um, yeah, I had a slow start. I think I'm like 15th in the championship now okay. after missing two rounds. Yeah. And to win the championship, I'd have to like pretty much win every race in the next six rounds. Is there six rounds left? Yeah. Is there? Which is cool. So like, I can still make the top eight. Yeah. yeah. Which gives you guaranteed for the year after. Is that yeah, right? yeah. I, th I think like... Given what I've achieved over the last few years, they would even if I didn't make the top eight, they would give me a spot. Yeah. Um, but like the, it's, I'm gonna come back just under two months after breaking my back. God. Um, and they said how, three months. How um, you know, talk about breaking your back before. How close was it for some to, to been like really, really serious? Um, well, the worst thing was it didn't hurt. I didn't have any pain. Right. So that was the scariest thing because. Jeez. But before I actually had the scan, I was in the hospital saying to my mechanic, like, yeah, my shoulder hurts. And I was like, twisting my neck left, right, backwards, forwards. Like, I feel Everything good. Everything you I was shouldn't be doing, probably. Bending over, touching my toes, like twisting. And I was like, yeah, oh, I feel all right. And then they said, like, it's pretty serious. So basically, if you've got your spine, I cracked straight through one side to the other. Wow. But because I hit the fence, like, straight on and stopped yeah. and bounced off the fence, it broke and like I didn't like twist or move anything, so it was like in place, but it was split. Okay. So if, if like, it had twisted, I was lucky that it was in between my shoulder blades. Right. Because there's ligaments and soft tissue and your shoulder blades and all that. So that was well. in holding it in place. But yeah, if it was somewhere else, it could have been quite scary. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, man. It's part of it, man, isn't it? Part of it. It's part of the journey. If it happens, it happens. New yeah. chapter. Exactly, exactly. And that's pretty much all you can do. Right? Yeah. It's cool though that it's give you that different perception on life and do you know what I mean? Took mm. a little step back. You think again, I went through some some shit like that where I definitely had a bit of a reality check recently and that was like what, three three or four months ago I think now. Yeah. But yeah, definitely That's makes, insane. Yeah, definitely makes you stop and think. Yeah, re re Do you think you would have died? Huh? Do you think you would have died? Oh yeah. I gave up like three times. I was ready to die. Three three times. Yeah, I gave up 100%. Because I, I was like caught in the water swimming mm. and there was no sign of any help, like no helicopter. Like, and uh, I'd, I was in the water for like 50 minutes and I reckon at about like the 40 minute mark, your brain's telling you to do some weird shit, like take your life jacket off, just go down to the bottom. It's all over, sort of weird, weird thoughts. But yeah, there was a couple of times because I got like cramps so bad mm. that I couldn't, couldn't move like I, I was trying to swim well kick and my my legs just went s like s rock solid obviously you, your body's going to shut down mode I believe yeah. at that time so you know your blood's protecting your vital organs like your heart and whatever and uh dude it was so painful there was definitely I, I vividly remember like three times going just fucking just give up man just like go down It'd be way easier than this crazy crazy yeah Definitely, definitely, uh, it's been an eye-opener, dude. And then how did, it, how, how did you get out? I got uh, helicoptered out. Wow. Air, air ambulance. Dude, there's so many weird things lined up to get in that air ambulance. So, okay, so we fell in the water right in the middle of Loch Ness. Yeah. And um, there was a camper van. It's like, Loch Ness is like two and a half kilometers wide where mm -hmm. we fell in. So we're about a kilometer and a half or whatever in the middle. So it was all, quite a long swim. We noticed a camper van up on the shore. Randomly, the people in that camper van had gone there, gone to that side of the lock. They, did, they weren't meant to go there that day. The, the daughter had bullied, basically bullied the family. She wanted to see Loch Ness, so they pulled up at that, that point 
As soon as they pulled up, they heard shouts for help, which was us, obviously. The guy, the, the dad, granddad, the day before, I believe, had bought some binoculars. So he managed to get the binoculars to look out on the water to find us. Found us, alerted the Coast Guard, right? Who then alert ambulances, air ambulances, Coast Guards, all that sort of stuff happens. So the fact that they were there was crazy. The fact that the guy had binoculars was crazy. The fact that they got out of the van and heard us is crazy. And then my two friends made it to shore, James and Alex, and there was a paramedic there who was only there to take, like, scouting out an area for his holiday at wedding photos. And he was only there for that. And he randomly came in the car, which had gas and air in it, so that oxygen, sorry, so he could give my two friends oxygen because they were starting to get pneumonia. Wow. So much shit, dude, just lined up. And then obviously the air ambulance, uh, the, yeah, air ambulance came and dragged me out of the water. So that just goes to show that, it, like, when it's not your time, yeah, dude, it's not your time. It's not your time, yeah. And when it is your time, yeah. none of that shit would have lined up. Yeah, it's wild. That's the law of attraction. Mm. The universe it aligning is. itself. It is. Dude, so many things lined up, but yeah, it was, uh, it was a close one, mate. Real close one. So now it's cool, though, because we're doing this marathon, running a marathon at Loch Ness in a couple of months to raise money for the RNLI, because the RNLI saved your life. Saved our life. So, hmm. so many cool things have come from it, but... Mm. It's a mad story, man. <laughs> it's one of those, though, like, you never... I never expected to be that guy who could sit here and say, yeah, I nearly died. Well, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I nearly like, died a few months ago. I was exactly. <laughs> it's true, though, right? Like, you, never think, you never think you'll be that guy, do you? No. And no doubt you're, all at, you're probably around loads of people in this sport. I mean, what, once every couple of months, there's probably someone who has that, like, close shave. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's a fucking reminder. <laughs> yeah, you need that in life, though. Yeah, I think to you do. To appreciate well. the things. I think you do as well, man. I think you do. You definitely do need to. Do you look at things up. different now? Is it giving you, like, a bit of a different look on yeah. life? Yeah, it has, actually. It would have been scary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's scary, like, for sure, for sure. Especially because it happened so fast. Like, we were laughing and joking one minute, next minute you're in Loch Ness. And so how did you end up in the water? Field. So we were in, like, an open-top canoe. Yeah. And uh, the wind got up, which meant that there were some waves, and then we took on some water. And next thing you know, just toppled upside down. Wow. Yeah. As quick as that. Yeah, like five minutes, I reckon. I watched a doc to finish. I watched a documentary on a guy that got in a sailing boat and was lost at sea for seventy-two days. Jeez. Yeah, man. Really? Yeah. And he like his little sailing boat sank. And then he blew up his life raft, jumped in that, was like, "Fuck, I've got no supplies." Dived back into the sinking boat, went down, like got his supply thing, chucked it all back in, and was like looking at it and like, "Fuck, it, I'm gonna like this isn't gonna keep me alive for long." Mm. And he knew that the wind was, he was like pretty switched on with his directions. He mm -hmm. knew the wind was blowing him into the shipping lanes. So he waited until he got to the shipping lanes, set off his flares. This is like a week later. Set off his flares. <coughs> um, no ship stopped. And then the wind changed direction. He was like, man, I'm like, I'm getting taken away. The next place is like three weeks away or some wow. shit. And like, I'm going to die. Yeah. And anyway, had all them thoughts and was like nearly dead. Caught like speared a fish, caught a fish, hung it all up to dry in his thing and like got by. Um, had a problem with a shark coming up, trying to bite the thing. And Jeez, what's this? Um, I want to see it. If you just like go on YouTube and like search yeah. lost at sea, for, guy lost at sea for 72 days or something. Right. Or 74 days, I can't remember. And he was like pretty much on death's doors, like no energy, muscles had all deteriorated. And he like poked his head up and saw a bit of land and he like got this lease of life and started paddling towards it and a little fishing boat came past and they was like, oh, what are you doing out here, man? And he was something like 62 miles from his destination. Really? And he drifted nearly like three quarters of the trip. Jeez. But the problem was he goes, it was like a two month trip or something. Yeah. And he goes, if you don't hear from me in two months, then there's something wrong. But this happened like the first week into his trip. Oh, right. So, everyone so was like, oh, he had fine. to wait another like four for six months, yeah. or six weeks before anyone would even expect him to be lost. Jeez. And he's like, I've got to survive six weeks before anyone knows that yeah, I'm lost. Yeah, yeah. That, to be fair, like out of all our shit that we went through, that's been the biggest takeaway of like, it's just been prepared for stuff. Yeah. Like, and that's been a load of people have reached out, you know, Dude, like 60 something thousand people have listened to that episode. I've had a lot of messages off people saying, you know, it's made me 
take my mobile phone with me when I go for a bike ride. It's made me pack a waterproof coat. Yeah, man. Little things like that. Like, I went for a run the other day and randomly, like, the guy I went running with was like, I listened to that episode, I bought a Garmin watch so people can track where I am. Little things like that. That's what, it's that's like the biggest takeaway, right? You go for a drive in a car, you don't know if you're going to get a puncher. So you need no. a spare wheel, you need a first aid kit, you need an umbrella if it rains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Sleeping bag, like, you never know. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I often think that as well. Because, I, I, you know, I do loads of driving for work. Like, and being, it's like being prepared. Yeah, if anything happened, I'd be fucked. Even though you're in, like, a brand new van or whatever, you'd still be fucked. So, yep. yeah, it's been, it's been, yeah, an eye-opener for sure. Yeah. Seven Ps. What's that? Perfect yeah. planning and preparation prevent a piss-poor performance. It's true, yeah. I always screw that up. I, I, I can't remember what I said. Piss poor <laughs> planning prevents piss poor performance. Piss poor. Oh, yeah, that's close enough. Something like that. I don't know. I don't remember. It's funny. I cool. remember my uncle came over to Australia and like we always like when I was a kid we used to do that and we got it to like the fifteen p's. Like, I was just throwing <laughs> words in there. It was so good. I wish I wrote it down because I can't remember what it was. But you just think of a word that starts with p and just try and tuck it in there somewhere. <laughs> Oh dear. So you asked me what's going on with me, dude. So what, what's you know what's going on with you for the future? So obviously, when this goes live, I'll be practicing. Yeah, probably. So where can people watch that? There, it's BT Sport, isn't it? BT Sport Saturday night. Roslov. Yeah, fifth round of the World Championships. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that'll be interesting. And then I'm full swing. Like we're back into it. Yeah, we race the GP Saturday. Then I'll race in Poland Sunday. Fly to Sweden Monday. Race Sweden Tuesday. Home Wednesday. And on the grind. Yeah, just goes. <clears throat> but it's nice because it's like August, so I've got like August, September, October, and then I'm done. Right. So I've missed out on two months, which sucks. But it'd be nice to finish the season off, finish on a high, so that everyone remembers my last race and kill it. <laughs> only um, as good as your last race. Yeah, so yeah, I guess the, the, the only thing that I can really try and do this year competitively is um, like win the British GP. That's like the When's only... that? It's in September sometime. It? That's when my book's released. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Perfect. Good, good yeah. shit. I'm going to come to that this year. It's been a while since I've been in Do it, man. Hit us so up. I'll give you some passes and yeah, stuff come, so you can I'm come down come the pits. That. And yeah. I'm going to come to that for sure. For anyone who's listening as well, the British GP is insane. Cardiff Millennium Stadium. Millennium or Principality? Huh? They changed the name. Oh, mate. did they? Yeah. Nah, I think no. it's called the Principality Stadium. Big now. one in Cardiff anyway. <laughs> yeah. It's like 50,000 people or something ridiculous. The streets are heaving. Sells atmosphere's out. Atmosphere's like, unreal. Atmosphere's insane. <clears throat> yeah. What's it like coming off a speedway season and having an off season? Because It's great because I'm, by the end of the season, I've had a gut full. Really? Yeah, because it's gone. so much travel, yeah, like yeah, yeah. big events. And just by the end of the season, you're just like, man, I just want to fucking Do you chill? chill? I like, chill for two weeks. <laughs> and then I start training start again. Start missing it again. No, I start training again. Oh, right. <clears throat> That's one thing that, again, like, you know, I've been around Speedway a little bit in my life, you know, with Ash and Jonathan and other athletes and stuff like that. I feel like a lot of, a lot of speedway riders struggle with that, like, come down a little bit because your life's so high on adrenaline all the time. <clears throat> I'm, yeah. I'm quite different to a lot of riders. Like, sometimes I think, like, I, I, I won three world championships, right? Mm. And I don't really feel like I put everything into it yet. Right. Still got a bit more to give, you think? Yeah, from like a fitness and nutrition point of view. Okay. Like I, I train hard. Yeah. But no, no, that's wrong. I, I do put everything into it, but I don't live it and breathe it. I feel like some of the guys that I race against, they live it and breathe it and it's all they want to do. Mm. Whereas I'm not like that. Okay. Like I come home, I, like if you walk through our house, there's not one thing. I was thinking home. that before. No actually. trophies. Yeah, I was like, thinking that. Nothing. You wouldn't. You have a break if you walked it. in this house, you wouldn't know I was a spear no, rider. Not at all. Um, so usually smells like methanol. <laughs> <laughs> so I like I switch off when I come home. Don't like. There's a rule in my van. So after the event, we talk for one hour in the van, have a debrief. After mm. that hour is done, do not fucking talk about speedway because I don't want to hear it. Cool. So I have a very good like on-off switch when it comes to my racing. But that kind of makes me think, well, if I was more like them and like, I think it's more the want. Mm. Like sometimes I'll roll up at a Grand Prix and I'll roll out to the start line and I'll just look at a bit and I'll go, oh yeah, that'll do. I'll just okay. go from there. Right. I won't like scrutinize it and think into it and like, where should I go? I'm going to get more grip there. That's right. a bigger rut. I'll get, you know, 
I don't, I'll just roll up and put the bike on the stand and go, come on, then here we go. Dude, there's also surely got to be that like aspect of it where you're doing it so much. Does it come, become a bit boring rolling up to a start line? I think that's what it is. I think yeah. it comes down to boredom. Like I've, yeah. I don't know, I've been doing it for so long. Not boredom, but you do it so much. It's like, fuck, not again, have I got to prep a gate? This will be all right. I'll just go from here. Yeah, but may, maybe, but then it's the other way. Like, do I want to be at that first corner in front? Mm. Is, that, is there enough want there? Mm. Sometimes I question that. Okay. And the years that I come back, like the years that I've won the world championships, like Faye said, like she's known from the start of the season. She knows at the start of the season how I am in my headspace, how I'm talking about Speedway, whether I'm going to win or not. Right. And the years that she said that I'm going to win, she wrote it down right at the start of the year, like this year he's going to win, this year he's not going to win. And she's like, told you. Wow. This year, no, you wasn't going to do it because this is how you was here and this is how you, you said this and this. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, like 2015, like my first interview was like, I'm fucking ready. I'm going to win. This is my year. Like, mm. doesn't matter what they do. It's my year. I'm done. Like, that so was I, the first one? No, 15. 15. So I was you like, won put, put my name on the trophy because they ain't going to catch me this year. Yeah. And I just absolutely annihilated them all. Really? Yeah. Yeah. But this year I wanted to go back to back. That was my target. I trained real hard in the winter um, with the Ironman boys. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of cycling, running, open water swimming. I just smashed out my training, was living and breathing training, enjoying it on a ketogenic diet. Oh, sweet. Yeah, nice. I, I like the keto diet. Yeah, me too, man. It's you cool. should listen to the last episode. It was with a guy who's a keto expert. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's called Josh Perry. And, uh, Mate, I hope Pro BMXer. And, uh, well, ex Pro BMXer, but he basically found, after he had a head injury, yep. went for an MRI, and they found two tumors on his brain dude this is the guy i was telling you about before where's he from uh australia uh um america sorry this is the guy i was telling you about yeah earlier when yeah. i said oh what's that american dude that rides bmx yeah yeah josh yeah, yeah sick. he's a friend of mine no way there you go he was the last guest on this yeah yeah he's cool man he's That's been on before out. as well like just talking about the ketogenic diet and how basically he's managed to keep these tumors malignant yep from being keto yeah and he's now like a spokesperson for the ketogenic diet he does all these health summits and stuff it's really not nah. to do i'll hook you up with that, dude. You... when i started like getting into it and understanding it it the big the hardest thing for me was actually trying to understand the science behind it okay get yeah. my head around the science yeah. of why am i eating so much fat why am i allowed to snack on pork scratchings <laughs> yeah like, do you know sure. stuff like it that it's feel like, normal at all because it's not what you've been told no yeah and then you start to like you know listen to podcasts do research all that sort of stuff. And there was a guy that they had two sheep in the same environments, fed them their whole lives, one on a Western diet, one on a ketogenic diet. Right. When they passed away, the Western diet died first, ketogenic lasted another two years. When they did the autopsy, the Western diet had fat all around its organs and right. was really unhealthy and overweight. And the, the other one was like lean, really? like no stress. And um, yeah, it was just, it's really cool. And that's the only diet that really works for me in the off season, yeah, the keto yeah, diet, yeah, so. Yeah. Amazing. I, I've, I'm a little bit off it at the minute. And the reason of having Josh back on, it was meant to be like a bit of a kick in the ass for me as well mm. to get back on that program. But when I was on it, like a couple of years ago, I'll show you, I've got a fucking cool photo on my phone, like this transformation. Cause I got a little bit plumpy there for a little while. Mate. Then I went like full keto. <laughs> All I've eaten since I've been Have you had off. that covered up? Do you have like, Wizard of Oz there? Oh, no, that she's still there. Oh, is that there? The okay. Wizard of Oz with a twist? Yeah. <laughs> Tin Man licking out Dorothy. <laughs> but yeah, dude, that, that diet is insane. Like, yeah. it, it genuinely is insane. It's how we should eat. I yeah, think. it's mad. Like, it, it's just a, it's a hard one to get your head around. Yeah. Like, yeah. when you tell someone, like, right, you're going to eat more fat, yeah. protein, yeah. cut out all your carbohydrates, which is even, like, fruit and, like... Mm it's crazy what carbs are in stuff and then reduce your sugar intake. <clears throat> but the transformation crazy. in like, even in a couple of days. Yeah, no, yeah, for sure. No, I agree, I your agree. Your body drops all that water and you just look different. So straight away you're like, wow, I've started this diet, I feel good. <laughs> like I look yeah. good, I feel good. Yeah. And then it kicks you on. Whereas if you like train and eat the Western diet, it takes longer for it to come off. Mm. But when you, you do like the keto anyway. the first week, you see results and you're like, wow. This is amazing. It's interesting. And then, yeah, the, the, just trying to understand it all and, like, you know, you've got to have more potassium and, in, and like, more salts because yeah, yeah, yeah. your body's not getting that and more fluids. Yeah. Um, 
and yeah, just the the stuff you get to eat, and it's it's fun. Like you can pretty much do it all the time. Like yeah. it's it's it little, I, I was doing it up until the start of the season, and I okay. found it hard to go abroad at like in foreign countries. Because traveling as well is tough. Yeah, like in an airport, you can't find anywhere that's like yeah, unless you take like a bag full of avocados. Yeah. You can't... Um, a bag full of avocados. No, yeah, it's tough, it's I agree. It's hard to get like, your fat in. And that's why I struggle with, even in the UK, like, you're travelling, it's like, right, I need something to eat quick, I'm starving. Can't do it. It's hard, really hard. You have to be so prepped all the time. Yeah. And it's all right to be prepped, but then you kind of, like, you got to find that balance in life yeah. of yeah. spending all your time prepping your food. Like, in Australia, when all I've got to do is train mm. and eat, and go hang out with the girls, it's easy. Yeah, yeah. Because you, you, be you can plan your day around your food. Mm, like a, when I was training in Aussie this year, to, to have that balance, like we spoke about the balance earlier, I wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning, 4.30 I'll be out cycling, I'll be back for 9 o'clock to have breakfast with the girls. Nice. And then I start my day. Right, that's good. That's Instead good of stuff. waking up together, them having breakfast, me going training, yeah. then me having a late breakfast, then trying to have lunch together. I just thought if I just get up early in the morning and go to bed a little bit earlier, so I'd pretty much go to sleep when Riley went to sleep. Right. And Faye would stay up for a little bit longer because she wasn't really tired, but um, I just made sure that every day I was back. Like if we were doing an open water swim, we'd be in the water for six o'clock. Wow. Um, wow. My cycles, yeah, like wake up at four, four fifteen, four thirty, be out on the bike. Um, so you like cycling faster as well, then, which is pretty interesting. Not eating before you just get on it, set off. Yeah, everything I was doing faster. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I like doing that as well. Even with the running stuff I'm doing now, like try and do it faster. Yeah. Because when you're eating, it's fucking. Weird. I did a half marathon. Uh, like I did a bit. I was doing a bit of running last year, but obviously I haven't done anything for the last two months. But yeah. last year I was like, oh, I want to run. I'm going to run a half marathon. Just woke up and I was like, I'm going to do it. So I had breakfast and then went straight out for a run. And like the first 10k is was savage. Like <laughs> the food was bouncing around yeah. my stomach, and I was like, man, why have I done this to myself? <laughs> So yeah, I'll never do that, but I still did it. Cool. I did it in um, four hours, just under four hours, I think. Nice, good effort, dude. No. Four Sorry, hours is a long hours. time. I was gonna say four hours. hours is a long time. Yeah, two hours. You can grow it in four hours. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I said four because I've joined up to do an Ironman on the 1st of December, full distance. Wow, where's that? Um, no, Bustleton in Western Australia. Oh, wow. So that'll be a challenge for me. That will be a fucking on, challenge, mate. On six weeks prep. Jesus Christ. I'll be going deep. I want to do it in sub ten, well, 10 hours is my target. Full distance, so that's two mile swim, is it? It's, uh, I think it's 3.7 kilometer swim, okay. 180 bike, and a 42.2 run. Fuck. Wow, dude. You do the marathon after the fucking swim and the bike. Yeah, I know, right? Savage. <laughs> the marathon, the other saying now, now you, I'm training for a marathon and like feeling a bit fatigued. It's hard. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. What am I getting myself into? Yeah, but you'll get through it. But. You will. Phase due the day before. Right. So I'm trying, I don't know whether I'm going to switch it, like see if I can switch it to the year after. Because <laughs> like, I, don't really wanna, I, think. I don't really want to be like nah. in the middle of a marathon and Faye day, calls me like, dude, you've got to come, I'm mm. going to labour. And it's like, oh, I've only got 20 k's to go. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep I'll it there for a minute. Hold it in. And it's like two hours from where we live anyway. So right. it's probably not ideal to do it. But there's a few other things I can do that year, like there's um, the tour down under. Okay. Uh, not the tour down under, the Margaret, tour of Margaret River, which is like a four day cycling event. Right. So I'll probably do that race. Um, there's a tour down over on the East Coast. So I'm trying to get sponsorship off Giant, right. um, like world sponsorship. Yep. So I've got stuff here in the UK and stuff in Australia for my pre season. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just waiting to hear back from them. Um, so yeah, it's, awesome. it's pretty gnarly. We've got heaps going on. Sounds like it, man. Um, Sounds like it. The business I want to set up. Yeah. This. When you're heading back to Australia, us? another child. Yeah. Life tactic. When do you go back to ours? Uh, my last event that I've got to be at is on the 8th of October. Okay. So, probably the 10th. Shoot straight over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, straight over. There. Probably, well, it depends on like there. how phase the rest of her pregnancy goes because okay. she's got to fly out there and. If there's any complications, then maybe she won't be able to fly. She'll have to fly before, okay. like, middle of September or something. So Meet you out there. Sort of yeah. Thing. Okay. we just got to wait and see. Is the last next. speedway in? Torren. Oh, is it? Yeah. Was it in New Zealand before? Is no, that Australia. Or? Australia. New Zealand was a long time ago. Was it? <laughs> Started the season there for two years. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. yeah. Did it start then, this year, did it? No. Okay. No. And they left New Zealand and did Australia for, finished in Australia for two years. Right. And then... 
Uh, now there's no Australia, but I'm trying to, another thing I'm trying to do is get the GP in Perth, where I grew up. Oh, right. So I was built a new track. Okay. So I'm pushing to try and get that there. We've got emails going backwards and forwards. Wow. Um, trying to get all the Team GB guys over to Australia for a winter training camp mm -hmm. this January. Okay. Um, that's just more shit and trying to sort out. <laughs> Hectic. And then doing the BT stuff. And yeah. Full gas, man. Full gas. Like, I'm going to do, once we've finished up here, it's the British Championship tonight. Yeah. And I'm going to get re have lunch, get ready, drive to Manchester, do that. Done this with you this morning before you got here. I was out in the digger working on the patio. We're doing a, a big <laughs> infinity patio off the, around the house. I'm just non-stop all the time. But it's nice. Wouldn't have it any other I'm way, I'm looking man. forward to racing next weekend. I bet. Yeah. I bet. You're going to kill it. I hope so. I feel it. <laughs> I'll write it down. <laughs> All right, man. Let's wrap this up. Cheers, brother. It's been a pleasure. Enjoyed it. Uh, if people don't already follow you, what's your social handles? At T Wuffenden. All of them. Tywuffenden.com. Tywuffenden.com website. Yeah. The new merch is going up on the shop this week. And the book. The we'll put a link out. to the book in the show description for anyone listening to this. No, nah, don't put it in yet. Okay. Because... I want to do pre-orders on my website. I don't okay. know if I'm allowed yet. Okay, but if right. I am, then I'll get a little bit more cash from that. So okay, perfect. Help All pay right. mortgage. <laughs> yeah, let me know. Let me know and we'll push it. I'll push the shit out of it for yeah, you. Yeah, man. And, uh, Thanks for coming down. No, man, I appreciate cool. it. Good to catch up. Can't wait to start my podcast. I can't wait to be on it. <laughs> See you in a bit. See you <laughs>